Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are gonna be talking about solder mask expansion. Now, in a previous video where we were just getting started with our four layer board project, we got a really great comment from somebody and it was talking about solder mask expansion. So we're gonna look at that and then we're actually gonna explore what that is, why it's important, and what you should choose for your solder mask expansion. All right, let's get started. So as I mentioned in our intro, we got a great comment from Jack Olson, who's actually an author on the Altium blog, and I'm gonna link to one of his uh, articles on the Altium blog. But for now, let's take a look at that question, because it is dealing exactly with solder mask expansion, what the default value should be, and if you should change it. Jack Olson writes, thanks for creating such a great intro to Altium using a real world design. It's very helpful for someone new to Altium, me. But it is not good advice to change your solder mask clearance to zero to get it around an unnecessary 10 mil default all to all clearance. Jack brings up an important point here and he doesn't necessarily say it directly in that first part of the comment, but he is mentioning that there are default values that get set in your PCB design rule. One of them is the all to all clearance. Another one is actually the solder mask sliver. So the solder mask sliver relates to the solder mask expansion. So I'll explain what that is in just a moment, but the point here is that sometimes you need to change those default values because they might not work with every design and with every component. Let's look again at what he says in this question. The bare board manufacturer needs a little bit of wiggle room for misregistration to keep the mask material off of soldered surfaces. So they might expand it in cam, whether they tell you about it or not. So this second part of the comment gets to the heart of solder mask expansion. Let's look at exactly what the solder mask expansion is and one of the conflicting pairs of design rules that actually govern what you should put for your solder mask expansion. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna kind of draw a big, let's just say it's a six lead integrated circuit here. So I've got my pads arranged around this thing and um, you know, maybe this is like your ground pad or something, I don't really care what it is, but we've got some pads here. And if you look in the PCB footprint, normally what you see if you just look at the, cop, uh, at the top layer is just the copper layer. So this is all gonna be the default color in Altium Designer, the default color is red for the top layer. So you'll basically just see all of this in the regular copper color. Normally in the footprint, you don't assign this to a net, you'll actually do that in the component, in your schematics. Um, and then when you import it into the PCB layout, this will get assigned to a net. So no, not normally assigned to ground by default. But one thing that happens in your PCB project is once you use this footprint in a project, it'll apply some solder mask expansion around these pads by default. So what is the solder mask expansion? Well, remember, the top layer of a PCB is covered in solder mask, also called solder resist. And essentially what it does is it defines these pad outlines plus a little bit of wiggle room. So if you look at the solder mask opening, it doesn't actually match the pad all the time by default. It depends on what the setting is in your design rules. So the solder mask opening could go all the way out to here. And in Altium Designer, the default, which I think some people would say is a bit overly conservative, is four mils. So that's gonna get applied to every pad by default as long as the component is not part of a component class. So this is gonna get applied automatically. As soon as you import it into the board, you'll be able to see this opening when you look at this uh, at this component in 3D, or if you switch to the, uh, to the top solder layer, you'll be able to see all of these openings. And it's gonna apply this to all of these pads by default. There are two ways to actually look at this, right? If you say how big is too big, you would actually need to look in one sense at neighboring pads. So if I have these two pads next to each other and the solder mask opening gets too large, what happens? Well, it means that this little section of solder mask actually gets too small. So this is called the solder mask sliver. There's actually a design rule inside Altium Designer that sets a minimum value for this solder mask sliver. And so you can already see where these two design rules are actually in competition, right? This one, the, uh, the solder mask uh, expansion, is actually gonna expand the solder mask beyond the boundary of the pad. And then of course, that could trigger a violation in the sliver rule, because if this solder mask expansion gets too big, this sliver gets too small, 
and you have a design rule violation. If the sliver gets too small, it could actually pop off during manufacturing. I actually put a, bo a bunch of boards through uh, with one fabricator uh, just recently, and they told me for their process to not go below five mils for this solder mask sliver. Now, if you have a really uh, coarse pitch between these pads, maybe you can apply, you know, just one mil or two mils here for this solder mask expansion, and you won't trigger a solder mask sliver uh, design rule error, nor will you uh, create a, a fabrication defect here. However, if you get to really fine pitch pads, eventually this distance gets too small, there's a risk that this leftover solder mask will pop off uh, after fabrication. And then you basically have no dam here to prevent solder from wicking over from one pad over to the other. This can also arise because let's say, uh, just as an example, like I have a resistor here, you know, and let's say these are the pads and just for the fun of it, let's just say that this is the silk screen outline. There's also gonna be a solder mask expansion around this pad and then also around this pad. And so you can already see that if the solder mask expansion around both pads gets too big, then it limits how close you can actually bring these two components together and then still prevent a violation of the solder mask sliver rule. So the sliver is gonna be right here, left over. We would like to avoid violating solder mask sliver rules just so that we don't have any assembly defects after soldering. Again, if your components are not too densely spaced together, and you don't have really fine pitch between components, you're probably not gonna have any solder mask sliver problems. Maybe set the minimum to four or five mils, whatever your fabricator recommends, and then you're probably gonna be just fine. However, the other thing that was brought up in the comment was something called misregistration. So, what is misregistration? Well, misregistration occurs when there's some slight misalignment between the solder mask opening that they wanted to define around this pad and the actual location of the pad. So for example, let's just say for a moment that on this pad, we made the solder mask opening exactly the same size as the pad. Now, if the solder mask is slightly misaligned from the actual location of the pad, then what could happen is that the solder mask wouldn't actually perfectly outline the pad. It could actually outline maybe something like this. So it could actually miss. What would happen is then you actually have a smaller than optimal surface to be able to solder onto. So this pad that actually peeks through the solder mask is actually smaller than what you would really need. The reason that we apply a little bit of solder mask opening is then to allow for any misregistration. So let's just say we applied a one mil solder mask opening around this and we had one mil of misregistration. Well then, instead of there being an overlap between this opening and the pad, it would essentially just kind of do this. So we'd have just a little bit of misalignment, but we compensate for maybe that one mil or two mil misalignment, whatever it might be. And then we still have a fully defined pad here. What specific solder mask expansion value should you use? Well, that's kind of the golden question here, right? Because you want to prevent misregistration, but you also want to prevent slivers. So to answer that question, I actually talked with a good friend of mine. His name is Kelly Dack. Uh, before filming this video, I actually got on a, a Zoom call with him and we kind of hashed it out. So it's a good conversation. Let's go ahead and tune in and look at that. How should a designer look at uh, providing solder mask clearance to the board manufacturer? Now there's tolerances and accuracy levels involved in the different solder masks. But what happens when that board goes off to volume production? Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be built at that prototype supplier anymore. It's gonna be built at a, uh, maybe onshore. If it's high volume, perhaps it's offshore. Mm -hmm. And offshore suppliers may have totally different capabilities than our onshore onshore uh, suppliers, they may use totally different materials and processes. So your commodities or your supplier management uh, outfit in your team are, become in charge. They, they become the stakeholders that are in charge of getting this board built. And they, they will send uh, the, the manufacturing data package off to the uh, board suppliers. And the thing that is going to come into play is the note the notation and your data. And again, this gets back to where we're going and that is how much clearance have you provided, has a designer provided around the, uh, the, the land, 
in order to allow for misregistration and everything else. Should we rely on our uh, default settings for our bear for our, uh, our tool, our design tool, whatever it is? Because I've seen design tools set, you know, they they set up their libraries. I've seen library companies set up uh, uh, clearances at two mil, three mil, four mil, because they hold up their thumb and they go. You know, we need to provide some kind of clearance sure. because that's good DFM. It's designed for manufacturing. So we're going to design it for manufacturing. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me float a balloon. How about if we design with manufacturing? And here's, let's get to the point. Let's design with manufacturing. And the way to do that is if we take that, that net pad, it's a, you know, 25 square mil uh, land. And we adjust our settings and whatever they are from default in our, in our layout tool. And we set them to net. We set the solder mass clearance to zero and it yields a, a 25 by 25 mil solder mass clearance. But you're going to say, Kelly, that doesn't provide any clearance and things things, uh, you know, move and there's tolerances uh, involved. And, and the world's going to come to an end. There'll be mushroom clouds and stocks will drop. It, it's not like that because what what I learned, uh, I, you know, we all kind of know this, but I came uh, very familiar with uh, our company's incoming uh, CAM department. We do the front end design, but our design goes right through the doors and goes directly into the CAM department of the supplier. The CAM department takes that data and they start modifying it. That's their job. They have special uh, software that uh, will make compensations to the design uh, data for their specific manufacturing capabilities. Yeah, they're so going to put it. They're going to put it into a CAM tool, and they're going to select all of that, and they can modify it. Yeah. So why the question comes up? Why? should we spend any time holding up our thumbs and trying to design for that CAM engineer? Why don't we provide them uh, net data? We'll provide them something that they can adjust. So now we're designing with manufacturing because we're saying, yes, this needs to be cleared, but go. we have a, a rapport with them because we communicate with them, or we may even have a note on our, on our fabrication drawing that says, okay, to compensate to uh, allow for manufacturing uh, processes. So now that that product that product can go to vendor A, prototype vendor A, and the solder mass clearance is going to be perfect because they control it. Mm -hmm. So we're designing with manufacturing. Don't be afraid to set it low, but also make sure to include a note that allows the cam operator to adjust to ensure the proper, uh, to, to ensure that uh, they can actually fabricate it and then assemble it. Where do we actually go to find the value for solder mask expansion in our design rules? I'm gonna show you where to do that in All Team Designer. You've probably got another design rule in your own CAD software. So just go check it out in your own software. And if you're an All Team user, follow along. Okay, so I'm on a uh, uh, layout that we've done for uh, for Altium Education. Um, you'll notice some, there's some uh, thermal uh, attachment styles here that we don't really need. That's not really the point of this demo. Actually, what we want to do is look at what the solder mask expansion is in these uh, in these footprints. So if I go to the selection filter, just grab pads. You'll notice here if I just click on a pad go down to the properties panel, um, I can basically change whatever I want to about this pad. Here you'll see there's an area for solder mask expansion and I can set it to rule or manual, right? So right now it's just set to the design rule and then you can see in these two boxes, the design rule is set to apply zero mil solder mask expansion on the top and bottom layer. If I wanna change that for just this one pad, I can. I can click manual and then I can basically put in whatever I want. Now, obviously the bottom one doesn't enable because there is no pad on the bottom. Uh, this is a surface mount component, so I would only be editing the top one, obviously. Now, what if I wanna change this for all pads? Well, what I would do is I go into the design menu, open up rules, and you can see right here under the mask area, 
We have a solder mask expansion rule. You can choose where it applies, specific components or footprints, pad classes, whatever the case may be. Um, and you can change that if you want to. Um, you could even make it negative. Okay, so let's say I want to make it negative two mils. If I hit, do that and hit apply, what's actually going to happen is if I go over here to, let's look at this other layer here. If I go over here to top solder, you can see it's actually going to be just slightly smaller than the pad. So you can see the pad edge right here, and it's actually just set that to be slightly smaller. So you can actually have the solder mask cover over the copper if you want to by setting a negative value for the solder mask expansion. And then you see here, if you go into the properties panel, it's already set for a value of negative two. Let's say I wanna set it to, I don't know, negative 10 just for fun you can really see that that solder mask uh, opening gets a lot smaller. So you can certainly do that if it makes sense for your particular design. That's something that you might do when you need a solder mask defined pad versus a non-solder mask defined pad in something like a BGA. So keep that in mind, that's definitely something you can do. Um, now, based on the uh, discussion that we just had with Kelly Dack, what you might wanna actually do just for your purposes is to go into the rules Go down to the, let's see here, minimum solder mask sliver. And here I've got it set to five mils. That's a pretty conservative value that most fabricators can deal with. And then go over here to the solder mask expansion and actually set that to a small value, maybe one mil. And then like Kelly said, in your fabrication notes, leave a note for the fabricator that gives them the ability or the uh, allowance to change this uh, solder mask opening uh, as they see fit in order to ensure uh, that they can fabricate the board successfully. Okay, everybody, so hopefully this lets you in on the right way to deal with solder mask expansion. Remember, your fabricator might expand it manually and not tell you about it, and that could create an assembly defect if you're operating with a very dense board. For most boards, might not be such a problem, but just be mindful of that when you set your default solder mask expansion value. Setting it to zero or one mil is probably the smallest you should go, unless you have a good reason to do so. And if you are unsure, definitely leave a note in your fabrication notes or a note on your quote form when you're submitting your board for fabrication that gives the cam operator the uh, uh, permission to expand the solder mask if they need to. All right, everybody, thanks for watching this. Thanks everybody for leaving your comments, especially you, Jack Olson. That was a great comment and we love getting stuff like that and doing videos on it. So keep it up everybody and uh, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And last but not least on this stuff, don't forget to call your fabricator folks.